Hello and welcome. I'm Nate 42 and in this video I'm just going to do an updated look at TrueNAS Scale version 2102 Alpha. Okay, so as you can see, the Alpha uh, for February has just come out. Uh, Alpha 2, I think this came out on the 15th and it is now the 19th of the month. Um, so I am a little bit late on this. I was using the nightlies before, which was kind of fun, but also um, a little bit unstable at some points. I managed to get to a part uh, using this where I uh, damaged a couple of things that I didn't really want to damage. And so I thought what I'd do is I'll stick with the alpha. So I've gone with the alpha one. But moving on, I just thought I'd take a look at some of the things that have changed since the last time that we looked at it. And uh, I think that was probably like a month or two ago now. A couple of things have changed. Not a huge amount. A lot of back-end fixes have happened. Uh, there, there, there was an issue with uh, SMB Samba, which uh, was quite annoying. In which, if you if you transferred files to the Samba share, and they contained more than a couple of folders or more than a couple of files. And I'm talking, I mean, it's quite a big amount that was still the threshold. But yeah, if you were to do that, sometimes it would stop and you'd have to restart the Samba process. So if you guys are having that issue, just go into system settings, go services, and then under services, when it loads, I might have to upgrade the system now. <laughs> uh, not because of uh, this, but yeah. I, I want to make sure that I can get everything that I want. Samba is here, SMB. So just turn that off, turn that back on. You don't have to reconnect to the drives. Uh, well, I didn't have to anyway. Uh, they just connect and then you have uh, a good connection. Yeah, you have a good solid um, fix there for that issue. Now, um, if you look at the storage here, uh, the storage that I've got set up, um, there's a couple of different things. You want to make sure it goes all under the top folder. So I have Vault, and under this I've got Applications, Archive, Documents, IX Applications, which is actually something that I need to get rid of, because this is the uh, this is the data store for um, the uh, the applications in the Applications menu. Um, I had to revert because I accidentally installed something through um, the system. Uh, through the shell system and it it uh, decided that it wanted to delete most of the back-end stuff for IX systems uh, which I believe was called like middleware D or tr or true NAS or free NAS or something like that so it started doing that it started wiping out the entire system itself um, and I was left with uh, just a blank box basically so the I mean the good thing about these systems is every time you use nightly Every time you upgrade the nightly, uh, it creates a new backup of the previous one that you had. So you can have like 20, uh, every time you do the update, it will save the previous state and then give you the new state. So I had like three or four different other states, which were good for me to revert back to. So that is that is a bonus. That is one of the really good bonuses for this, uh, for the nightlies anyway. Um, now what I can do is I can go into system settings, boot, um, which I will do in a sec. Okay, now that's gone, do a quick restart. And what you want to do then is go to apps. Now, there's actually a couple of apps on here now. You need to choose the pool. We'll choose the pool. We'll choose Vault, because that's my favorite pool. Uh, and the only one that I have as well. So, you know, there is that as well. Installing Nextcloud on this is fairly easy, unless you've already installed Nextcloud onto this, because uh, it does sometimes keep over the uh, Docker containers or images or whatever, uh, which can become a bit of an issue the next time around that you try and do it. Okay, so now it says using pool vault. <laughs> Close. Um, and uh, what this should have done, hopefully, if it is acting correctly, is created the folder here, IX applications. Very good, we've got the folder here now. So what we want to do is we want to go into um, oh, actually, I'll just show you a couple of other bits real quick. Uh, so they're the same, I'm pretty sure. Uh, data protection, this is all the same. Uh, network, this is all the same. We don't need to see that. Um, users, backup credentials, um, certificates, 2FA. 2FA 
kind of works, but it is a bit annoying because sometimes the page will just log you out, and that is that is pretty annoying. Um, but that's probably one of the issues that's going to get worked out in the future as it gets more stable. Virtual machines, you can load a virtual machine in here. Um, I did do that once. Uh, it didn't go great, I'll be honest, um, because you have to load it in through the storage. I didn't really know exactly what I was doing, so I just left it um, and uh, yeah, just removed it kind of thing. Uh, in here, you do have updates. So updates, it will say you're on the pre-release. Um, no updates available, and that's great. If you wanted to install nightly, you'd have to go and find the file and then install manual update file. Pay, uh, put that on here and it will update that and it will keep your it should keep your storage and stuff like that and you'll go be able to go uh, do the nightlies uh, I'll put a link for that in the description because it is kind of useful if you do want to do that um, and especially if you're running on a uh, on a virtual machine on your own machine just to see what it's like it is nice having this um, I, I could show people how to set that up if you wanted to uh, it's not too hard uh, to set it up in like a virtual virtual box and then um, add an extra like two drives, three drives to it. The drives need to be a minimum of three gigabytes. So keep that in mind. Uh, if possible, maybe do like two or three, five or ten gigabyte drives. Uh, and then you can just test everything out pretty much uh, if you really wanted to. Apps. So apps now, there is four apps, IPFS, Nextcloud, Minio and Plex. Now, I don't like Plex very much I like Jellyfin I will do another video which will probably come out after this one that will show you how to install Jellyfin onto here uh, right now there's no installed applications but what this will do is um, we'll go into advanced settings here you can see the settings here are set up for Kubernetes Kub Kubernetes Kubernetes whatever it's called um, and Nextcloud is the official so we'll install Nextcloud let's see if this actually works this time because I did try this earlier <laughs> <laughs> um, Nextcloud NC1 now I'm just going to call it that because I've never called it that before and I've had a couple of different Nextclouds not on this version but on like previous versions of this system always pull images even if present on host uh, now we want to change the username and password we want to change that to the ones that I'm going to be using um, which is good Good, good, good. Nextcloud data directory. Now I'm having, I'm having trouble deciding if this is actually the data directory, uh, which in, in which case it would be mount uh, vault uh, vault documents data, or if it is just a directory for data for Nextcloud. Um, I don't know, uh, but I'll recommend using a folder on. Um, your storage because you definitely want to be able to uh, put stuff in this folder probably or to have it as a consistent storage because uh, with this um, if you set this up wrong um, anything you do to this thing when you restart your machine will be deleted basically uh, so you want to make sure your settings are saved on a place that is not on that machine if you if you get what I mean I'll try and I, I will try and explain that a little bit better a little bit later on um, but yeah enable host path for Nextcloud data volume and then you can just go out for I've got Nextcloud conf and then this is actually from a previous setup that I had and it's got the config files and all this kind of stuff in there so that's nice that's real nice and click existing pods before creating new ones cool I think we are good. Let's save that and then hopefully this will actually create what it's supposed to create. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so now you can see Nextcloud NC1 is here deploying 0 out of 2. It's up to date and you can see what port it's on, 9001. Now with this system you can't put anything on any port underneath I think 9000. So 9001 is basically the first one that you can use. I don't know why that is the case, but it is the case. So anything that you put in this system here is going to have a port over 9000, um, which is fine. I mean, it works, you know, it's a, it's good, whatever. Um, now we will find out very shortly if this does work. Um, 
But this is most of the stuff that has happened on this so far. You do have launch docker image here, which is pretty good. And it shows you all this stuff. Um, reporting. I very rarely use reporting. But, I mean, you do have the data here. So, you know, it's got the idols. It's got the the power being used. Um, uh, the I don't think it has the temperature still yet. Oh. Oh. That must be where I restarted earlier. Yeah, so uh, just for anyone who is having issues with applications, if you want to restart it, you can go settings, unset pool, uh, make sure you delete your containers first under this bit here, uh, unset pool, restart the machine because um, you won't, the, the folder in here, the IX applications will be mounted. IX applications, this will be mounted which means that you won't be able to delete it. So delete, uh, restart the PC, restart the, the server, sorry. Delete this folder, go back into apps. Oh no, no, sorry, don't go back into apps yet. Uh, restart the PC again, <laughs> and it should hopefully allow you to uh, set up a new apps thing here. Hopefully this will work okay. Uh, and you can see this one when it shows up here. It's doing a lot of stuff in the back end at the moment. It's got to download the image. It's got to set it all up. It installs a um, a, a like a MySQL type server as well. So yeah, it's deploying one out of two. So it, it deploys itself and it deploys a MySQL server, which is pretty cool. It's pretty good that it does all this stuff in uh, like a one-click install, I guess. Very similar to the first um, server that we did have, which was uh, FreeNAS. FreeNAS. Which was a very good system. I did. I really enjoyed using Freenas. Um, now, after after this, you go system set. There's system settings. You got shell services boot advanced. Now, if you need to go back at any point to a previous uh, version because your one has messed up, you can go into boot. I mean, I'm I'm just like kind of updating these things. There's not really much else to update you guys on with this uh, but you have these things like this so there's the last one 2012 alpha so that obviously came out in oh it came out last month what uh, this is o2 alpha alpha one or whatever these are the two other ones that I had. You can just click over here and you can go activate. And if you activate one of these, what it will do is it will uh, probably say say reboot or something like that. And it will uh, take over. If you have that set as now reboot, it will do that. Alternatively as well, if you have done it and you've really messed up the one that you're in now, you when you restart the machine, uh, use the keyboard to go down to a different version because it does it will show this list and it will have like these and then it will have like advanced underneath it you can't do anything with the advanced really but yeah just click on the one that you want to change to uh, it doesn't matter if you choose the wrong one again you could just restart and do it again um, and it's good it is good to keep a backup whenever you need to do anything uh, important or specific on here so make sure you do keep the backups because you may need them, <laughs> especially with alpha software. You know, like this is this is just testing. This is just testing software. And obviously, as well, if you wanted to enable for SSH connection, just go into services, go down, turn SSH on, and then if you open up a terminal, you can SSH into uh, You can log into this and you can do the stuff like through this as well. So that is always nice. That's always good to know. Um, you can't log in with root as default. I just remembered because it does say on here, log in as root with password, um, allow password authentication. So you want to make sure that is ticked. And obviously that one probably best not ticked because it's not good to log in as root onto this system. Um, B 
because it's the default it's the default one so if you have that then someone could be pinging networks out there some hacker who may actually uh hack into your system which is not something you want to happen and you can just yeah and then you can do any of the next things that you need through this way and i will be showing a few more cool linuxy things that you can do next time uh, I just want to see if I can get this to work. Okay, so it's saying that it's ready, that it's active, port 9001. Let's click this and see what we got. <laughs> Hopefully it's kept my um, my configuration from the last time I set this up because um, I spent a lot of time setting it up last time and, you know, I've made a lot of issues, a lot of errors, mistakes along the way. And, uh, yeah, there we go. This is not great. <laughs> this is not great because this is uh, this means it's not working. Um, I will check the server log, and if I can get this working, I will report back in the comments below or something. So, yeah. Oh, and also one thing that I do need assistance with, if anyone knows, is how do you add a mount, an extra mount, to Nextcloud if it's already running? Um, because I'd like to do that. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me think comments with us at the 2 and see you next time.